Good morning, fam. Lights are on. It's only 5.40 something. Good morning, Isaiah. Are you excited for fifth grade? This is unheard of. You never wake up before six o'clock. <laughs> you gotta get used to this, huh? Today is the first day of fifth grade for Isaiah and first grade for Karsten. Ready to get our day started? Mm -hmm. A really, really good morning, you guys. I really need the good morning greet. <laughs> because uh, first of all, I'm not used to waking up this early. And second of all, this is going to be our new wake up uh, time. Wake up time. New school hours. So they're going to have to be in school like two hours earlier than they have been the previous years. So let's make breakfast for the kids. Gotta get their lunches. We gotta get back on this routine. It's still dark outside. Yeah, good morning, Carson. We're not, we're not that dark like when it's foggy night. Who's a first grader today? Yay! Here's Carson, all ready for first grade. Can I come? <laughs> Here's Isaiah, ready for fifth grade. Fireworks! Safe. safe. Carson, we're waiting for you to be safe. Like, <laughs> you are silly. Can I come? <laughs> I'm still waiting. We're not moving safe. until everyone's safe. Safe? Okay, Can here I we come? go. Bless you, Zaya. So, my mother in law just got here. She is going to stay with Kalea. I always tell them I don't mind bringing Kalea, but they feel bad for her. They want her to like sleep. My mom is in California for the next two weeks again. So it's great to have my mother-in-law come and help. I get to do some groceries too right after I drop off these kids. Okay, and, here we go. And last night, Kalea threw up bananas. No, she didn't. Oh, that wasn't night. last night. That was the other night when mommy and daddy went out silly. Oh. <laughs> you guys, this is so funny. Their bell, their first bell doesn't ring until 7.20. It is 6.50. So they're like, why are we here so early? Because they don't understand. The previous years, it has been traffic. super crowded in traffic here. And their school's already crowded as it is. Um, there are a couple of cars out and then like cars in the faculty lot. I can't believe they lot. don't know how to wake up. No, I'm sure they're awake. They're probably running around like we did. But um, we didn't watch around. this place get crowded real quick, yeah, boys. It's going to get crowded really quick. Um, so um, We were the first ones because we ate for like two minutes. No, you ate for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Carson is so excited because he gets to go in the same gate as his, as his brother. Right, um, Carson? Yeah, so we can be funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> You're me. They're both carrying a bunch of heavy stuff in their backpacks because of all their school supplies. Plus heavy. I have three more bags of it's, stuff. It's as, heavy, it's as heavy as Isaiah on my back. He's so excited to be in the same gate as his, as his brother. I said, I'm sitting in the parking lot at the grocery store. I know, it feels like we just did groceries, right? But there's just a couple of things I have to pick up. I'm going to, I don't know what I'm gonna make for lunch or dinner yet, but I think for dinner I wanna try to make the Korean soy um, garlic fried chicken. And my friend here on YouTube, you guys probably already know her, and if you don't, check her channel out. Rose and Austin from Maui. Their channel is Rose Austin C. Um, she has a recipe for it, and it's um, it sounds similar to the Bonchon soy garlic fried chicken, so hopefully I can do it right. A successful early morning grocery shopping day. I am watching Rose's a uh, recipe video for the soy garlic chicken one more time before I attempt it. Follow Rose guys, Rose Austin C here on YouTube. Kalea's over there playing with her mama P. She already ate, took a bath, ready for the day. Okay, I'm at this part. Shaking up all the chicken up in there. Okay, so the only different thing I'm gonna do from Rose's 
um, soy garlic sauce is I'm just going to add a little bit of rice vinegar and a little bit of sesame, sesame oil. <laughs> I can't even talk. So the first batch that I pulled out of the fryer, um, does it look as brown as roses? <laughs> but I know we are refrying this a second time around, so we'll see. Sauce, I kind of regret putting the sesame oil. I should have just put like a tiny bit, but I probably put like a teaspoon and it's really strong. Okay guys, so this is the current situation. I redid the sauce because I wasn't filling the, what is that called? The sesame oil in this one, it's too strong. I did see a recipe online, a couple of them actually asked for um, the sesame oil, but I don't know, it's kind of a turn off. So yeah, I'm dumping that out and I'm gonna go with Rose's Simple Sauce. I think I got to show you guys the new fish that we got. Gerald set them up in the garage because he's able to um, regulate the temperature, but check them out. So I was in the middle of vlogging in my kitchen after I got out of the shower, but it was so awkward because Kalea and my mother-in-law would walk downstairs, not once, but twice during my attempt. And it's still kind of weird for me to like be vlogging in front of her because, she, I don't know. I don't know, it's one of those things, you know, people don't understand what you're doing, they'll be like, why is she talking to her camera? But anyway, um, as I was saying in those clips, I probably won't include them because they were so awkward. I was like talking and then all of a sudden I realized they were in the room and I was like whispering. But I am on my way to pick up the boys now. It's still 30 minutes early. Someone's calling me before I start driving. What's up, babe? Hi. What up? You've been busy? I'm about to I'm about to drive out of the driveway. It's approaching dinner time and Kalea's asking for pancakes. Dude, I can give my kids ice cream for dinner right now because of what happened today. I just want to make sure my kids are happy. And I'll let you guys know what happened today in a little bit, but I was trying to tell you guys earlier, but Kalea was like all up in the mix, so I'll wait till I can sit down. A strawberry. Isaiah and Carson are having ice cream and Kalea is going to have pancakes before dinner. Mommy, I think these pancake. kids can get away with so much right now for me. Mama, pancake. Mm, Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse. Hey, we're going to grill some ribs for dinner and I made this salsa that my friend Janice and G's family or parents made when we were younger. Whenever I'd go to their house, I remember loving it. So I asked my friend Janice for the recipe so we'll see if it even tastes um as close as what i remember as how i remember it tasting okay so kalea's outside while gerald is barbecuing um so i can finally tell you guys what happened i mean if you guys follow me on facebook already then you probably already know or if you guys are um one of my close friends then you already know what happened but okay so what had happened was I was vlogging earlier, um, it was still early, like 2.05 or 2.10. Carson and Isaiah gets out of class at 2.20. And I got out of the car at 2.15, walked up to the gate. It was open early. They opened it like 2... Well, one of the moms told me they opened it at 2.15. So parents were able to pick up their kids early. And I walk up to Carson's teacher and I only see three kids left. But Carson wasn't one of them. So I asked his teacher, where's Carson? And he said, oh, he went on the bus. And I freaked out. I was like, what? He doesn't ride the bus. He wouldn't know what to do. And the teacher said, he has a, he has an or. Oh, the teacher first told me, well, somebody put a tag on him. He must um, be, what did he say? Like he must be on like the bus list or whatever. And then when I was running off, the teacher said, he's, he's on the orange bus. So I ran towards where the bus was and then there was a lot of kids still in line to get in the bus near their colors or whatever and I seen a teacher. I didn't even know what I was saying. Like I wanted to faint. It was hot out there. I didn't know what to think. Um, all I could think about was Carson getting lost. That's all I could think about. And I spoke to a teacher or somebody there at the gate and I said, and I tried to explain to her what happened and I, I don't know if I was having my um, verbal dysphagia then, but it must have came out where I said something about orange bus because Isaiah was standing next to me. He found me just in time and he heard me say the word 
orange bus and that teacher couldn't even help me she's like i'm sorry i can't help you right now i can't leave these kids but go to the principal he's over there by the bus and we tried to catch up to the principal but he was walking way too fast so we um we walked by the buses and luckily isaiah goes mommy look orange the orange bus because there were kids walking up inside this bus with their orange tags on their backpacks so we get in that bus and there i knew i knew i had expressive dysphagia already because i didn't even know what I, what I was telling the bus driver he looked at me like i was a crazy person and luckily isaiah was smart enough to be like he called out his brother's name he said carson and carson looked up over his little body looked up over and he just looked so confused i grabbed him i told him let's go i grabbed him and i hugged him so tight and i cried my ass off in front of the whole after school i didn't even care i was so pissed off i was so scared i was i was just shook i was very very I don't know how to explain it, but I was crying. I was hugging him and apologizing to him. And I asked him, I go, why did you get on the bus? And he said, I told the teacher that, or what did he say? He said, somebody did put a tag on his backpack. And he said his teacher told him to because he's on the list. And Carson told his teacher that he doesn't take the bus. But his teacher said, well, you have a tag, so you have to go to the bus i know there was a miscommunication misunderstanding somewhere and it was the first day of school but i think there should have been a better system in trying to find how these kids were going to get home because not everybody made it to open house and not everybody's going to fill out those bus forms i never filled them out in my life for as long as my kids have been going to school they have never taken the bus and they know that and okay so i was pissed off we literally rushed to the front office i was holding my kids hands and I was walking as fast as I could I was so pissed off his teacher even seen us walk by he's like oh good you found him but I totally ignored him walked straight to the office and I don't care who was there I think I was a little calm but in my mind in my mind I was hysterical and crazy that crazy mom but I spoke to a younger girl in the office and she just looked at me like while I was I was still like tearing up and still, you know, hysterical and telling her what had happened. But after I said everything I wanted to tell her, she didn't even say anything. She just pointed at another lady. So I had to tell my story again, hysterically, to another lady in the front office. She was very apologetic, but she said, if he was tagged, then he must be in the system um, as a bus rider. And I tried to explain to her that I never, ever filled out any bus forms. I never even seen one this semester i haven't even gotten anything and she said well she was sorry she apologizes she cut the tag off his backpack but i was so so hysterical still and i just told them how irresponsible they were because they could have lost my son okay carson is a smart boy he knows all of our names he knows our phone numbers he knows where we live well he knows like our address but if he if that bus drove off he would not know what to do because it's something that wasn't taught to him it's something that we never had to prep him for because we always pick him up and he knows that just like he told his teacher he does not take the bus yeah so if that bus took my son i would be in complete hysteria i would just go crazy i would probably sue the school i wouldn't know the end result i wouldn't know if my son would be lost or if we would have found him um but that was so scary everything happened like within five minutes but that was the scariest five minutes of my life i was so distraught i am still traumatized carson seems fine though he was like that was my first time in a bus and we just tried to ask him to see if he knows if he would know what to do if that bus continued to was it you oh my god oh my gosh as i was telling you guys a story did you guys hear that our alarm our house alarm went off gerald accidentally armed it with his phone in his pocket and then he, they opened the backyard door so the alarm went off I'm surprised they haven't called yet. Okay, so as I was saying, Carson looked at us and said, because exactly how I 
figured he wouldn't know what to do. I mean, if they even gave him the right tag to the right bus stop, that bus stop closer to my house is in, in a very busy street. My son wouldn't even know where to go. I wouldn't even want him to try to cross the street. He never even crosses the street on his own. Even though we drill in his mind about looking both ways and all that. Oh, there goes my alarm system. Hi, everything was okay. It was accidentally armed. Okay, no problem. I'm glad you're safe. I did receive the burglar alarm from the back door along with the cancel signal, so I do not need the password made to save your personal last name. Me too, bye. Oh, that was my alarm. Being on point, which is great. Yeah, my poor baby wouldn't have known what to do. I don't know. I've calmed down. I even cried to my mom and Gerald already. And voicing it or venting on Facebook and getting people's feedback just kind of made me feel a little better but once I completely like calm down from it I'm definitely going to speak to somebody like the principal I don't know who to go to but somebody I'm gonna get to the bottom of it or it's not like he's I don't know something Carson's fine though I'm the one that's traumatized I mean I hope he's fine he seems fine we're gonna continue to drill them about situations like that and yeah hopefully that doesn't ever happen again but that was our dilemma today. Um, this all came in a FedEx envelope and it's from Legoland. And it's cool because it has all of the kids' names and my name. I know Gerald's like chopped liver, but he, I'm gonna include my husband, okay? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so the kids each got to open up their own cards and then of course I opened mine. If you guys don't know, I am a specialist blogger for Legoland. So for Carson, it says, oh, I must have put the, okay, so each of these birthday cards has a complimentary ticket, a park entry ticket. And Carson says, your birthday is coming up, Carson, how exciting. His birthday is coming up. Carson was so excited about that. He was like, how do they know about me? <laughs> and then Kalea, Kalea says, wow, Kalea, you just had a birthday. Hope it was tons of fun. And then Isaiah, of course, the savage one. Look how he opened it. His says, happy belated birthday, Isaiah. So yeah, the kids each got their complimentary tickets. And then mine has like my little letter from them. And then it also came with four more complimentary tickets. So we have seven complimentary tickets to Legoland. Yay, so cool. Can't wait to take the kids back there one of these days. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. Um, after dinner, we're just gonna get ready for bed. The kids have to be in bed by like 8 o'clock because we gotta be getting up at 5 in the morning. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everybody hold your kids really tight. Say a prayer for all the children in the world. I am especially going to be praying extra hard for my kids and their safety, of course, and their good health and for all of you guys too. So yeah, thank you guys so much. See you next time. Bye.